If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, or if you require answers to specific health care questions or concerns, you should consult your physician or health care provider and not depend solely on information presented in this program. Dr. Steve Garner. Welcome to the ninth season of Ask the Doctor. This series was created to assist you in understanding medical issues so you can take charge of your own health. There are two ways to get your questions through. First, by calling in, and second is by visiting our website at netny.net slash askthedoctor. I'll take those questions for future discussion, or you might see me answer them on my video blog. For instance, there's a new video blog on the H1N1 virus. Also, there's a new feature on the website it's called The Forum, where you're invited to voice your thoughts and opinions on different health topics. I use this medium to talk about issues we don't have the chance to cover on the show. So go ahead and take a look. And I think um, I really would like to hear from you people on The Forum. Um, there's an excellent article on there by one of our listeners, a Barbara Stevens, who writes in about healthcare debate and where she thinks we should be going. And I think I'd like to hear what the people out there think about their healthcare and where we can improve. Um, so get into that forum and let's, let's talk. Also, if you have any questions that we didn't touch, any medical concerns, that's an opportunity for us to, to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Anyway, for this episode, it's, a, it's an all-star cast. I have Dr. Montgomery Douglas, Department Chair of Family and Community Medicine at the New York Medical College. Now, next to him, no stranger to the show, I have Dr. Reginald Manning, orthopedic attending at New York Methodist Hospital. And next to Reginald Manning, one of our most favored guests, Dr. Anthony Sale, a pulmonary attending in New York Methodist Hospital. I want to welcome to each of you. And truly, I mean, this is an all-star cast. Anybody who's a regular knows these are the top three that we have. This is like the New York Yankees of 1927 sitting here. So <laughs> yeah, just, murder. just hold murder. on to your seat. Murder is wrong, <laughs> but not as doctors. We don't like to use that term. So, But anyway, in the news, and really dominating the news continues to be the swine flu. Interesting story today. Um, and the Lancet, uh, out of out of England, that the swine flu has a big connection to heart attacks. Now, if you have a history of heart disease, you better get the swine flu vaccine. Only about one third of people are getting it and this, with, with heart disease, and that's a big problem because this is a place where we can definitely prevent deaths. And about half of the deaths that we're getting are related to heart disease or heart attacks. So it's a warning out there. If you have any heart disease, make sure you get that, that vaccine as soon as it's available. And it, just who should get it? Um, well, unless you're allergic to eggs or have had a bad reaction in the past, everyone should get it. But because it's not going to all be ready in, in time for the season, which should start any, we're actually in that season now, we want to make sure the children are able to get it and pregnant women. And also healthcare workers. And healthcare workers, number one, because we want to have enough of them to go around, or we don't want to have an epidemic that knocks out you know, half the healthcare workers. And also because the patients who are in the hospital have the right not to be infected by the healthcare worker. And that's why it's actually mandatory in New York State that all healthcare workers get the vaccine, or else you cannot work in a hospital. So it's an interesting topic, something you may want to discuss on the forum. Is that constitutional? Is that legal? Is it right to make all doctors and nurses get the vaccine? Something we can talk on the forum. So that's. Or if you have chronic illness, you want to make sure you get it first. Uh, there should be a plenty come around November, so let the people that need to get it first get it, and then you can get it. The regular flu vaccine is available now, and that, that is not, should also be obtained now. It's not uh, enough to just get the swine flu vaccine. Okay, um, and also the swine flu is contagious, very contagious, and one of the reasons may be because it's infective. In other words, you can give it to someone two days before you actually get symptoms. So any one of us might have the swine flu, feeling well, shaking hands, and we're not taking precautions, and maybe giving it to one another. So treat everybody as a possibility with swine flu. Wash your hands. That seems to be the single biggest thing you can do. Wash the hands. Um, do the, the elbow bump. You know that much? The elbow bump? I like that. Yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> so so I, that's some of the things on the swine flu um, to worry about. Children, if you're over 10, children need only one dose. This came out today. Under 10, you need two doses, one to prime, get the immune system working, the other one to get the actual immunity. So children over 10 only need one. If you've had the swine flu last year or during the season, you don't need another vaccine. So if you're sure you had it, you might as well avoid it. And remember, any vaccine has a risk. Any vaccine has a risk associated with it. So if you don't need it, you definitely don't want to get it. 
So discuss that with your own physician. And now we come to a very popular part of the show, the quiz portion. And I know there have been eight winners in the past, and some of these questions are tricky, and we have a tricky one tonight. It deals with the New Testament. In what language was the New Testament originally written? Okay, and in what language was the New Testament originally written? And we'll start taking your calls. First one to, to call in with the correct answer gets tremendous handmade plaque. Have you seen that, Reggie? No, no. amazing. Handmade in Japan. It's exquisite, exquisite plaque. So yeah. tremendous demand for that. I know the, the phones are ringing away. So what we want to do is we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back and talk to our doctors and introduce them to you. And the phone number to call is 718-499-6101. And you can talk about family medicine. We'll find out what that is, orthopedics, and lung disease. So once again, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to go right to the phones. It's 718-499-6101. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Steve Garner, the host of Ask the Doctor. In addition to watching Ask the Doctor every Tuesday night at 8, you can also visit www.netny.net slash askthedoctor. There you can find the topics and guests of each episode. You can read my column from the week for the tablet, and for more advice, you can watch episodes you've missed. More importantly, you can post your questions and I'll answer them on the video blog. So visit www.netny.net slash askthedoctor and get your daily dose of healthy advice. Welcome back to Ask the Doctor. Our topics are family medicine, orthopedics, and lung disease. And the number to call is 718-499-6101. We're going to meet our guest, but first I have to acknowledge Monsignor Bennett now. Nine seasons. Hasn't missed the show. Monsignor, great to see you. River Cafe on Sunday? Okay, that's what we're going to hit. And um, I have to acknowledge, people come over to ask the doctor, um, that they're fans, to ask the doctor. We even have an Ask the Doctor 3 a.m. group of fans. But I met this week Dr. Uh, Jack Cherba on Avenue M, Mary Deville on Albemarle Road, and Gus of the Avenue J Florist. And if you like this haircut, Vincent Laspisa, the official barber of the Ask the Doctor show on Hair Pleasure and Beverly Road. So thank you for this. Um, I think it looks good. What do you think? Great. Not bad. Okay, you had a good haircut, too. <laughs> now let's meet um, our guests. Dr. Montgomery Douglas, who I've known him many, many years, he's a longtime friend of the show, and family medicine, chairman of family medicine. What is, what is family medicine? How does it differ from an internist or a GP? Right. Um, family medicine is the doctors that take care of the whole family. Um, it, one, the reason they call it family medicine is that anyone in the family can see a family doctor. Uh, it could be children, could be women for the gynecologic problems, could be women that need a baby delivered could be someone who needs surgery, minor surgery. It could be someone with a medical problem, a mental problem, um, really elderly. So it's really the family doctor, but the one who specializes in being a family doctor. They call him family physician. It's not like the old time guy that would go to the house, knew the yes. family, knew all the members. That's yes. cool. We don't have that enough, I think. I think it's a big loss to have that. So it's the modern version of the family doctor. Very yes. nice, and thanks a lot. We still have that church in Dominic Dominica that we're working on. Yes. Um, how, how is that going? Well, we, we started a... For a those who don't remember, it was a destruction by earthquake, uh, right. hurricane. Was it an earthquake? An earthquake. An earthquake. An earthquake. Destroyed the church in Port of Dominica in 2004 and um, engaged in a project to, with the Knights of Columbus to raise funds in the New York area to rebuild the church. It's the only Catholic church, right? Or the biggest well, Catholic church on the, the island? It's the second largest Catholic church on the island. Wow. Thank you. So we, we wish you well. I know your family has a lot of ties to Dominica. 15, 15 brothers 16, and sisters. 16. 16 brothers and sisters. So I always ask for an applause for his mother. An amazing job. <laughs> amazing job. <laughs> and all great kids. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Reggie, hi. Dr. Manning, one of our top orthopedists. Knee. Big, big knee man, right? Yeah. That, so what's, what's, new with, <laughs> what's new with knees? You know, I see all these athletes with knee injuries on AstroTurf. Do you think that there's a relation? Um, I do personally. Uh, what's new in these is uh, cartilage coverage. If people have cartilage injuries to the uh, lining cartilage of a bone, that can be resurfaced and replaced now. It's not universal, but it's, it's uh, becoming more and more accepted, and I think it's going to save a lot of careers. That's excellent. And it's, um, how, any recovery? How much uh, recovery time? Depends on how big the lesion is, and it depends on what technique you have. They have two different techniques where you put bone plugs with cartilage in, or if it's a large lesion, you actually have to grow some cells in a culture and re-implant them at two different operations and cover with And you don't have to be an athlete. If there's somebody has a problem out there, they oh, can sure. go to you. You oh, don't sure. have to be a world-class athlete, but you could just be a weekend warrior, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. That's, Excellent. That's only done in special places still. It's not uh, in the general uh, area yet, so uh, you still have to go to Manhattan for that. 
All right, but we'll work on it. Absolutely. Right? And you have your daughter, I know your daughter's doing well. Our kids went to Midwood together. I know your what is she, she's in corporate she, lawyer? She, she's, uh, she's in labor law. Well, and when you started the show, she was only, I think, in college, high school. Uh, time probably in law school at the time. I'm trying to, it's a dramatic <laughs> effect, right? <You> play, with, <laughs> play with me, all right? Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay, and Dr. Saylor, Anthony Saylor, who just, if you look at him, he's a member of the Board of Trustees. It's pretty good. It's excellent. Uh, what do you think, uh, what are the Board of Trustees, what does it do at a hospital? Well, it, it oversees a lot of the operational issues. Um, financially, the Board makes decision on capital budget uh, um, financial matters, but again, hospitals are mainly run, as you know, by the administration, administrative staff, and the physicians. And I think a close uh, working with the physicians, with the administration, really is imperative to the well-being of a hospital. And to give you a plug, since you've come to our hospital now, it's been, thank God, quite a while. Our radiology services have cataclysmically improved. Oh, nice. So. It's great to work with you. Thank you very Steve. much. And, and you're, you're a Yankee fan. And a big so. Yankee fan. But your personality that comes across to the people, because I know I hear this, is such that it makes people want to, you know, it, it, I think it aids in the healing process that you can be, understand the patient and talk in a compassionate way. I mean, every, everybody hears that, so it's something uh, we appreciate. You Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. But now we're going to see who is the first caller. Remember, we have that Maddie and Joel. I think the score is three for Maddie, one for Joel. Let's see who it is this week. Hello? Who is this, please? Oh, hi, Dr. Garner. It's Joel. Joel beat out Three Maddie to today. Three to two. Hey, Joel, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. You really got an all-star cast today. This is an amazing cast. I know Joel's a big fan of the show. Hi, Joel. And um, he always has an interesting question to start us off when he does get through. Anything brewing tonight up there? Uh, not so much. I got a question for Dr. Manning. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I've been working out a lot. I'm getting huge. And, uh... <laughs> Stay off the steroids. <laughs> Um, I've, been, I've been working on my legs, and now I've got this clicking in my knee. It's been happening, you know, for a, few, uh, a couple of weeks now, and it kind of hurts. Um, Probably doing so a lot of squats. I'm okay, but, you know, what do I do? What, were you doing a lot of squats and leg presses? Yeah, leg presses and really leg heavy weights and that sort of stuff. Really heavy weights? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Generally, that is indicating you're getting some wear and tear of the cartilage on the backside of your kneecap, your patella. And usually if you're doing heavy weights, uh, don't squat past a 90 degree angle or right angle because the more you go lower than that, you're going to start to really dig into that articular cartilage and wear that out. Um, and once it goes, it doesn't grow back. So if you're going to do squats, squat over a bench so your, your butt hits the bottom of a bench. That way you won't go down too low. Oh, and the same okay. with leg presses. Try not to go past 90 degrees. Good advice. Interesting. Thank Joel, I hope so that much. helps. You're welcome. Be well, Joel. Take it easy, all right? All right. Thanks, Dr. Okay, Garner. Talk to you later. Let's see who, um, again, the question is, what was the language that the first edition of the New Testament was written in? Okay. Hello. Who is this, please? Hello? Oh, I think the, the, whoever was on line two. Who is this, please? Hello? Hi. Who is this? Uh, it sounds like Maddie, but she may have. Maddie always has that d extra delay that we have here. You know, we have a seven-second delay. There's a 14-second delay. I think you got the call still. Maddie, turn yes. off the TV. Turn off the TV, and then we can talk. Maddie? Yes. Hi. What can we do for you tonight? It's great to okay. hear from you. It's good to hear from you. Turn off the TV. Yeah, yeah. I think Maddie's a little shaken that Joel beat her out. Yeah. Maddie, I want you to compose. We'll talk to you a little later, okay? What? Talk to you later in the show. Okay. Thank you, Maddie. It's a devastating thing. Okay. <laughs> we now got Loretta. Hi, Loretta. Yes. How are you tonight? Good. I think I know the answer is the Greek. Can you say that one more Greek. time? Greek. Greek is absolutely correct. Wow. Thank wow, the first, Loretta. Yes. How did you do that? <laughs> I, I just go to church on Sunday. I go to Mass, and I followed the scriptures, and I remembered it was in Greek. Wow, that is tremendous, tremendous job. We have very uh, it's it's good, good show, intelligent callers. So now this means you're going to get the plaque. Thank you. Only eight other plaques in existence. <laughs> Were you, do you have a place picked out? Uh, maybe in the living room. Oh, living room, yeah. yeah. And um, so do you have any medical issues by any chance? <laughs> I have a lot of medical issues. <laughs> any, you know, because um, what, what can we talk about? Um, lungs. 
Okay, okay. How old are you? I'm 45. And where do you live? Bensonhurst. Oh, Bensonhurst. Great place, right? Uh-huh. Where do you go when you go out to eat there on a Sunday afternoon? Tomasso's. Oh, very good place. I always tell you, ask the guy to sing opera in there. <laughs> he always does. He, always he does. I know you can't stop him. Yeah. But anyway, um, what can we do now? You got a problem with the lungs for Dr. Saylor? Yes. What's the story? Okay, the story is I have severe asthma, and I've been on different medications and stuff, but I keep on coughing, and nobody can't figure out why do I keep on coughing. And it's annoying. Okay, Loretta, first of all, congratulations on winning the prize. <laughs> oh, thank That's, uh, you. Shows us how intelligent our audience is. <laughs> Loretta, asthma and cough really go hand in hand. Hand, okay. Um, and I think you mentioned you're on some medications. What exactly are you taking? I've been on uh, Buterol. I've been on, um, what's the other one? Um, Do you take Advia. Them? Advia, okay. Loretta, th that's a good point. With something like albuterol, that's really only a rescue medicine. Yeah, so right. you should... You should only use that when you're short of breath. Advair, on the other hand, or some of these other agents are what we call maintenance medications. And Loretta, if you take those religiously on a very regular basis, okay. I think that will help you. Now, if that's not helping you, there's a lot of other uh, medications, treatments we can give you. So go to your doctor, mention that you're continuing to cough, and I think it's something that may be helped, Loretta. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, You're Loretta. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, stay on. You got to, we got to get your address, okay? okay? Off the air. Thank you. You know, before we get to our next caller, I want to use the forum to discuss issues of the health care system. And, uh, as you know, it, it, it can get a bad rap right now. A lot of people say, oh, we don't live as long as other countries, difficulty for poor getting in and so on. And it's interesting. In today's New York Times, there's a story that gets past a lot of the statistics on longevity. And it turns out if you live to be 55 years old in this country, you have a better chance than anywhere else in the world of living into your 80s. So uh, where we fall down a lot is on the prenatal care and the access to, particularly in some of the rural areas in the country. So it's something that it's, it's easy to look at one t area and say this is a bad system, but actually most people seem to be very happy with this health care system. And although it's too expensive, it's, you know, sometimes it's hard with the, with the health insurance companies dealing with them. But it's something I'd like to get to stimulate the conversation on the forum. So if you can get the New York Times, read that article to explain the longevity app, look past the health system. And let's talk about that tomorrow, okay? So now I see we have Larry. I wonder if this is Larry from, uh, I know we have a computer assistant, Larry. Larry? Yes, Dr. Garner, how it, are you? Is it Larry from Rockland County, right? That's correct. Yeah, we are all over. We get. Uh, what can we do? How are things in Rockland County tonight? Uh, tonight they're warm and uh, comfortable. Where can you eat? In Ro if, if any of us get stuck in Rockland County, go off a bit. Where can we? Where can we eat? Well, there are some nice places in Nyack to eat. There is at Piermont is just a short distance from us. If you like a pasta, there's a place called Pasta Amore, which is yeah. right on the water. And it's um, a very lovely setting. Good. In case you ever get your cost breaks down in Nyack, you know where to go now. <laughs> yeah. Right? So what, what can we do for you? Uh, I, my wife has a problem. She was, she was diagnosed with shingles. Mm -hmm. And um, it started a, a week or so ago. And, and now she has blisters. We went to uh, a physician today. And he says, there's nothing you can do for it. Just take some um, some uh, Motrin or something. Is that correct? There's nothing that you can do for shingles to relieve the pain and the discomfort? I'm going to ask Dr. Douglas to start off with that. Yes, well, you know, shingles um, is one of those things that um, uh, it, it, it's a re, re, re coming back of chicken pox, basically. And there really is not, is not a cure for it, per se. Um, it's, it, 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 it was in the nerve roots it came back onto the skin and if we're going to use something that would shorten its course it has to be used within 72 hours so if it's already past that there's nothing really that would really help it at this point um, now some older people can get something called post herpetic neuralgia that's something else and this is she still only got this last week as you said so yeah. i don't think we're in that category at this point there are some things that can be used to help it symptomatically, things that would help the pain, and there are a few products on the market that, that you can use. But um, at this point, 
trying to shorten its course since it's past the three days. I don't think there's anything in particular. When you say that there are some things on the market, are these um, ointments? Or? Yes, ointments, some um, bliss text, for example, or um, there's some that have a little anesthetic in them that, you know, just cool it down. There's, you know, quite a few small things you can ask the pharmacist over the counter that would help, yes. And, 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 and there, it just has to do what it has to do? Is that what I'm to understand? Exactly. Now, sometimes if she has uh, some, prim some problem with her immune system, Mm -hmm. then we would go ahead and use something, actually, uh, because then it could, it's going to last longer and it could cause a problem. But being that she's a regular healthy wife that you have, then uh, after a certain time, we don't really use anything uh, other than if we think they're going to get what I said before, the post-hepatic neurology. I just wanted to throw out, what about the, um, the injection, the vaccine for, for this? Uh there's a vaccine that supposedly cuts down on the pain and severity of people. Is it, have you long, used that at all? Long before, yeah. yes. I haven't used it, but you would have to get that at least two weeks before it arrives. Mm -hmm. And what about like something like a cyclovir or something like that, giving one of those medications? Right. Again, again, um, that that we, we the treatment actually works much better in the first three so days. You got to get it right away. You have to get it right away. Have you seen exactly. that a lot, Dr. Yes. Saylor? Yes. yes. Yeah. And Reggie, have I you had seen it? in college. Yeah. And it was you don't want calamine to lotion and pain and nothing, much, nothing yeah. else. Calamine lotion might help relieve some of the uh, itching. The itching, and, yeah. Um, it, and, it, it, uh, it, for me, it really didn't work, but I, 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 I look cuter. Uh, <laughs> well, sorry okay. to hear. Also, Tylenol, you know. Tylenol, yeah, the, just like a, a yes. aspirin or something like that. Yes. So it doesn't sound, sound like it's going to pass, but it sounds like there could be a little bit of pain involved for a yes, while. Yes, it, it is very uncomfortable. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, I do appreciate your help, doctors. You're welcome. Have a Good great luck. week. Good luck. You too. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I see we have Stephanie on line one. Stephanie? Yes, hi, Dr. Garner. How are you? How are you? Where are you calling us from? Uh, Nassau County, New York. Beautiful. Way out there. You watching on the computer? The, yes, I'm on the South Shore, yes. Very nice. What's out in Nassau? Give us a tip in case we're out there, because we don't know that much about Nassau. What's the best? If you had a, one final meal, where would you go? Mateo's in Long Beach. Mateo's in Long Beach. Very nice. That's a good yes. tip. What, what would you order in there? Stuffed artichoke. Oh. Is it in any meat or fish? No. It's an artichoke, a vegetable, and it's stuffed with breadcrumbs. And it's... Oh. If sounds you like that, it's, and it's very healthy, the artichoke. Dr. Sale is smiling. It looks it like he's good. salivating, actually. <laughs> Thank it's you. delicious. I had it the other evening. It's delicious. Oh. We're, I'm not far from Jones Beach. Oh, you, got, you ever go to the show out there? I remember seeing Frank Sinatra out there one time. Yeah, but that was quite a while ago. Now they have mostly things for the younger generation. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, I passed this by. But uh, we're still, I still like Frank Sinatra, huh? Yeah, definitely. The best. All right, what um, can we... Okay, I called last week about my broken femur. Oh, and we have Dr. Manning. Remember I said to call right away and yes, we're going to get in? Yes, did. Beautiful. You did, so, and I took your instructions. Give us a, a summary. Give us, like, okay. for those who weren't watching. I broke my femur in 2007, and I have a titanium rod about 14 inches in it, and uh, it's still been hurting me when I get out of bed, and it's hard for me still to walk up the stairs, you know, foot after foot. I have to kind of use the rail and the chairlift sometimes. And my orthopedist suggested that, uh, he said that extra bone grew there, and he suggested that uh, possibly taking out the titanium rod and uh, shaving off some of the bone. But he said, I asked him what the guarantee is, that it will help, and he said, he, he can't really guarantee anything. He's, he sounds, so sounds like an honest man. Yeah. Let, let me ask you first. He, he, you've already documented that the, that the fracture has healed? Yes, it has oh, healed. Okay. What he's talking about is heterotopic bone that can form around incisions, um, particularly if you do a lot of reaming and, and um, uh, drilling of bone. You get small bone fragments all over the place, and they uh, well, can, can heal and congeal, and they start uh, to irritate tissues because they're in a place where they normally don't belong. So if that's the issue, that should help. But when you use the word guarantee, it's kind of strong. Right. I can't even guarantee I'm going to be here tonight. But I guarantee <laughs> I'll do my best. Right. So if, if, if the pain is localized there, you can get an idea if, if that's the cause by perhaps an injection of um, some lidocaine or novocaine in that area. If that takes away the pain, that's probably the cause. And it well, may be worth your while considering undergoing the surgery. Uh, well, lidocaine, is that a temporary solution? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But, but it, would, would it would just numb the immediate area. If that, if that takes care of it, then that's probably um, uh, a good indicator that the surgery might be successful. 
Okay, have you done anything like that? I, I've, I've taken a heterotopic bone, yes. Um, it's, not a common, it's not commonly done, because very often it's very, very small. But if you have a large amount of it and it, it, uh, if that's the area where you're painful, then that's probably what you, you, you should think about. Oh, and uh, when you did it on the people that you performed surgery on, um, did it help most of them? Yes, ma'am. Yes, All right, so I guess uh, I think about it. A second opinion. Also. Is that something you could get a second opinion? Sure. On and your name's Dr. Manning. That's Dr. my name. Right. Where were you located? At the New York Methodist Hospital in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. My sister lives in Brooklyn, so. Okay. Alrighty, very good. good Thanks for calling back. Okay, thank you for your advice. You're Take quite care. welcome. Bye. Okay. Again, I want to, the, the winner, for those who didn't hear, the first New Testament was written in Greek, and that was courtesy of our puzzle master, Linda Lapatosa, I have to stress that, who's filling in for Eugene Hagawara for the year, who's doing his interventional radiology fellowship in San Francisco. <laughs> so we have a high caliber group yeah. here. Mm -hmm. We go to Carmen now. Hi, Carmen. Hello? Hi, Carmen. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Where are you calling us from tonight? I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Which part? I'm sorry? Where? Which part? Such a big borough. Um, uh, Cobble Hill, Brooklyn Heights. Oh, Cobble Hill. There now you got great Italian restaurants there, don't you? Yes, we do. Am I speaking to Dr. Who am I speaking to? Who, who did you want? <laughs> no, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just came, it just, you just came on so rather, rather quickly that, um, that I didn't know who I was talking to. Oh, no, to this, this, is, this is Dr. Garner. Oh, hi, Dr. Garner. Hi. hi. Um, I didn't have a question. I just wanted to say hello to Dr. Reginald Manning. Oh, isn't that nice? Hello. Yeah. He doesn't, I don't know if he remembers me. Oh, you're um, not showing up on the doorstep with his, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to. <laughs> we don't like to get this sprung on him on the show. What, what, what's the deal? I just wanted to say hello to Dr. Manning. He, Dr. Manning did surgery on both oh. my knees at Long Island College Hospital when he was chairman at uh, orthopedics at Long Island College Hospital. What's the name again? Carmen. Carmen. I don't Carmen. know if he remembers me. Carmen, 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 Carmen. There are no. a few Carmens. Um. He probably doesn't. I referred to him to mommy. Does that name sound familiar? Oh, sure. Mommy? Yes, yes, yes. But you, you was, you was, you, it's been a, it's been a lot of years. Many years. Were, yeah. yeah. What was that nickname? You, you were <laughs> No, no, that's an lick. Asian name, Tamami. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> just, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, good hearing from you. Everything's okay, I hope. Yeah, everything's fine. I just wanted to say hello to you because, you know, you, you were so great when I first went to you for my first surgery because I had a torn meniscus. And you showed me your wounds, oh, yeah. and that so eased my mind. And then you, then I had another surgery by you, and uh, then before I knew it, you were gone. You were gone from Liz. Yeah. <laughs> Things happened. But, it's beyond my control. We were, it's our, our gain. I know Dr. Manning first joined us at St. Vincent Catholic Medical Centers, and now is at New York Methodist Hospital, and it's the gain of New York Methodist Hospital. So Thank you. Thank you, you. Come by and see him. Good luck. Okay, Take. Dr. Manning, nice to see you again. Thank you, thank you. Likewise. Bye-bye. Bye, Carmen. Hi. Hi, <laughs> Shirley. Shirley? Yes? Hi, are you with us? Where are you calling us from tonight? Crown Heights. Now, we always have this problem. Where is a good restaurant in Crown Heights? I never get a good answer. Do you have one? I guess not. Okay. So we always have that problem with Crown Heights. I think it's a business there to open up a restaurant in Crown Heights. It would do very well. What can well, we do for you tonight, Shirley? Well, tonight um, I want to ask Dr. Salo. Okay. In the last <coughs> month and a half, I noticed if I walk up one flight of stairs, I get short of breath, and my chest tighten up so bad that I can't breathe. Okay. And, um, Shirley, that, are you a smoker? Yes. Oh. Okay. Well, one, my, one of my first bits of advice with you would be, of course, to stop smoking. Now, I don't smoke. Oh, you don't smoke. Okay. So that's good. Now, Shirley, shortness of breath and chest tightness may be something serious. It may be something not so serious. So I think it's imperative that you get to your doctor, Shirley, as soon as possible. You may need an investigation, for example, of your heart. Sometimes when you're short of breath and your chest gets tight, it could be a heart problem. It may be a lung problem. So it may be a problem with your circulation. 
So I think, Shirley, if this has been going on for a month, a ha month and a half, you really soon need to get on the line, give your physician a call, get in, and get yourself checked. Shirley, how does that sound? Well, I've been to my cardiologist, I've been to my primary care doctor, and they're telling me there's nothing wrong. Okay, so in that sense, Shirley, thank God, that's good that there's nothing wrong with your heart. So that's, a, that's very favorable. That's very good news. Perhaps your primary doctor can send you to a, a lung specialist. Maybe you should have a breathing test. So I'm sure your primary care doctor or your cardiologist can get you to a pulmonary specialist and maybe a breathing test or a CAT scan can be done, and that could get to the bottom of your problem. Did Dr. Anybody, anyone want to? Shirley, so it sounds like we need a little bit more workup. You're on the right track. And we call us back next week, and we'll find out what happened. Okay? Okay. Thanks for calling. Sorry, okay, we now have Maureen with us. Hi, Maureen. Hi. Hi, Maureen. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling for Crying Heights. Now, Shirley was just from Crown Heights, couldn't come up with a restaurant. Do you have one? But not in Crown Heights. No, I, I think, do you think there's a need for one? It might go over well? Yes, because I always go downtown Brooklyn to Junior's. Ah, Junior's. that's a great... Is, is the cheesecake still good in there? Oh, yes. Very good. Anybody on the panel ever eaten that? Sure. Yes. Yes. That's amazing, Anytime. right? Absolutely. Amazing. Real New York place. But we need one place in Crown Heights. We're, gotta, we're gonna work on that, this group, all right? Okay. Okay, what can we do for you? Um, I have sarcoidosis. Oh, okay. So you have, and um, is it affecting your breathing or? Well, two years ago, I had a fungus ball on the lung. Okay. And I had surgery. Right now, I'm taking Pregnizone and Spiriva. Okay. I want to know if there's anything else I could take besides this Pregnizone, because the Pregnizone has so much, you know, so many sure. side effects. If, if I could ask, how much Prednisone are you on? Five milligrams a day. Okay, so thank God that's a very low dose, so that dose shouldn't have too many side effects. The, the second point is, is that sarcoidosis is what we call a systemic disease. So it can affect the lungs, it can affect a lot of other organs. I think it's very good news that you're on a low dose of prednisone. And there are some other medications available to lower your prednisone dosage. But the fact that you're on five milligrams, mm -hmm. I don't think you need to lower it much. So it sounds like you're doing well. And if I were you, I would follow with your doctor closely. And if you're on five milligrams a day, which is low, perhaps in the near future it can be stopped. And I think that would be a very uh, uh, nice way for it to finish, at least at this time. Oh, so they would taper me off? Exactly. Oh, okay. Um, any, any, any other comments? Um, no, that's it. Okay. And thank uh, I thank you for we'll calling. We'll feel better. Thank you. Bye-bye. Be well. Now we, we're going to go to a break in a short while, but first let's see. We got Joel. Hello, Joel. Yes. Hi. We do, it's a different Joel than our winner, than our first Joel. How are you? Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Holland. Oh, beautiful. We don't get that many calls from Manhattan. I'm glad to get it. Where are you? Whereabouts? On 118th Street. Nice. And there, tell me, what's the best place out there? To eat? You, you have one special meal. You want to impress your girlfriend. Where do you go? Oh, man. Uh, it's hard to say because there's a lot of different restaurants out here. Mm. How do you get into that Rayo's? What is that? Is that hard to, that's hard yeah, to get into. Do you have any connections there? No, I don't. No. Anybody? No connections? No. That's, that, that's impossible to get into, but that's supposed to be great. Uh, all right. So what can we do for you? Yeah, I have rheumatoid arthritis, and recently I had bilateral knee surgery, right? Oh. But the problem is I can't straighten my legs out still. So it's, I want to know what can I do to help straighten my legs out? How, how old are you? 42. 42. We got, and, you hit the jackpot. And, and what, what kind of surgery did you have? Was it knee replacement surgery? Yeah, total knee replacement. Okay. P part of the problem with total knees is your quadricep muscles, or the muscles in front of your leg that, that straighten out the leg, get weaker faster than your hamstrings. So your knees gets used to being bent, plus it's a bit more comfortable to be bent. Um, how long ago did you have your surgery? August 18th last year. Oh, uh, you, you passed the golden period. Sometimes early on, you can undergo manipulation under anesthesia, where they basically put you to sleep and you stretch out some of the scar tissue. That's gotta be within a few weeks after the surgery. 
if you really, really are stuck and can't um, extend your leg, can't straighten out the leg, then you may have to get some surgery to release uh, some scar in the back, which is a bigger deal. And most of the time, it's probably not necessary. But if you've got bad uh, contractures, then you have to get the, surg sur the surgically released. And I'd probably even put you in a cast afterwards to make sure you stay straight for a while. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's, it's, it's a big deal, and I'm not recommending you jump into it right away. We really, 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 really think about that. I okay. Also, um, Joel, I wanted to ask uh, Dr. Douglas to tell us a little bit about rheumatoid arthritis. It's a topic we hear a lot about. What is it, and is it unusual for a 42-year-old to need this type of surgery, do you think? Right. Well, the thing about rheumatoid arthritis, you know, inflammation of several joints of the body at the same time, um, sometimes migrating from one joint to the other, and, and there are certain joints that it affects more than others. And um, so it's one of those things that is a chronic disease. And I guess that, one, that particular one, the knee became the worst, and you ended up with surgery for it. But I would imagine, you ha do you have it in other joints as well? Yes, I have it in my wrist and, and my ankles. Yes. And um, are you taking medications for it? Yes, I'm taking methotrexate and Humira. Okay, okay. So, and are you taking care of your joints, like putting them through range of motion, certain exercises that the doctor gave you and all those other things? Um, they gave me physical therapy, and now I'm back in physical therapy, but they, the, the physical therapy says she don't think there's anything that she could do for me. Mm, because the exercises that I do, I'm good with it. It's no problem. Like, if I, like, put on the dynamic splints, yes. my legs straighten out, right? Oh, but great. the only thing when I take the dynamic splints off, my legs go back to being bent. So well, that tells me you have to build up your quadricep muscles, the muscles in the front of the leg. They're probably still weaker than your, your hamstrings. Normally the quads... Um, the quadriceps to hamstring ratio is three to two. So if you have three pounds with your, your, your quads, two pounds with your hams. So you got to get your quads stronger. So Joel, I think some, I would like to see you get a second opinion here and um, you know, try and improve the quality of your life, that this disease goes on. And um, so call us back and you got Dr. Manning's number there if you need to get a second opinion, okay? Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, I think what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take a break. We're gonna pay a few bills. We got a lot of people on the, the line. We're gonna get back to Connie, who's, who's waiting patiently. And the phone number is 718-499-6101, and we can talk about family medicine, orthopedics, and lung disease. So after a short break, we'll be right back. Don't hang up your phones and keep calling in. Take care. I'm Dr. Steve Garner, the host of Ask the Doctor. In addition to watching Ask the Doctor every Tuesday night at 8, you can also visit www.netny.net slash askthedoctor. There you can find the topics and guests of each episode. You can read my column from the week for the tablet, and for more advice, you can watch episodes you've missed. More importantly, you can post your questions and I'll answer them on the video blog. So visit www.netny.net slash askthedoctor and get your daily dose of healthy advice. Hi, welcome back to Ask the Doctor. Our topics again are family medicine, orthopedics and lung disease, with me, I have Dr. Montgomery Douglas, Dr. Reginald Manning, and Dr. Anthony Saylor. The number to call is 718-499-6101. Let's get right to the phones. And Connie has been waiting patiently. Hi, Connie. Hi. How are you? Where are you calling us from? Brooklyn, New York. Which part? Sheepshead Bay. Sheepshead Bay. Tremendous area for seafood restaurants. Absolutely. Emmons Avenue. Yes. Emmons. Miss Lundy's, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I took my wife on our first day to Lundy's. Really? Yeah. That used to be, a, they could serve 1,500 dinners at one time. <laughs> Remember that? Yes, yeah. I do. So where do you go now? Like, when, for this, where do you go when you, when you just have to get out and you want to overlook the bay? Which is the restaurant? Um, oh, God. Any Ren, one of them. Any Rendazzo's? One. Rendazzo's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anybody here have a favorite in Sheep's Bay? No? El Forno. El Forno. Nice. Right on the water. Right, Sometimes the food is right. a little, yeah. But anyway, uh, what, what, can we do? what can we do for you? Okay, my problem is about three weeks ago, well, I've had back pain for the longest time, about a year, and I decided to do something about it. I went to a pain management doctor, which was recommended by my private doctor. Uh, and he said, go there, Dr. Hirsch on Ocean Avenue, mm -hmm. and he gave me two cortisone injections into my spine. And... It lasted two days, and after that, I'm in pain, oh. worse than before. How old are you? 66. 66. I'm going to ask 
We have Dr. Manning and Dr. Douglas okay. to start addressing. Uh, Dr. Douglas? Well, well, uh, first of all, I'm really sorry about this, um, that you have this back pain. You know, pain that has gone past three months that is of the back is really can be frustrating because we really don't have a great way of curing it, per se, and many times it goes away by itself. There are many things we try that help. Other things we try don't help. So um, at this point, um, are you, of course, exercising regularly? Not my back. Before you get there, what's your diagnosis? What are they treating you for? Arthritis in the spine. And any problem with the discs in the spine? Yeah. So you have disc disease and arthritis of the spine. Right. So you really have a degenerative back. Yeah. That, um, I, I mean, I've had surgery on parts of my body uh, for the bone. For the, you, had, you had spinal surgery? No, never. No. Okay, okay. And um, you've had MRI, I presume, in addition yes, to x-rays and CAT scans? Yes, I have MRI, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that, that can be tough. It really depends on how much of the back is degenerated and how much of the discs are herniated mm -hmm. and rubbing against nerves. There's no easy cure for that, unfortunately. Have you tried bracing? Back oh, braces? That, that's what keeps me through the day, yes. Okay. And, and, and medication, anti-inflammatories, pain medicine? Unfortunately, I can't. I have liver disease, so okay. I can't. Ugh, tough patient. Tough yeah. patient. Tough <laughs> patient. Uh, so I guess the back brace is going to be your friend, sometimes right. the heating pad, and whatever medication you could take, and uh, exercises, Dr. Montgomery said, whatever you can tolerate, should uh, ho hopefully ease things a little bit, but there's no cure. What do you think about going for another injection? Is two, two uh, enough? I have an appointment with him on the 29th of this month, and I'm not too sure about it. Mm. I mean, it only lasted for two days. Oh. Well, two I mean, just ju I would not give up, because a lot of the time, mm -hmm. patients with chronic back pain do end up having to see uh, pain specialists. But... It's not the answer, per se, as far as, you know, it's going to cure the back or anything. It's one of those mm -hmm. things. It's just one of the modalities that you can use, including exercise and especially swimming or, or, or pool exercises, exercises in the pool, and, you know, proper posture and all those other things, as well as your Tylenol, your, your anti-inflammatory, right. your Motrin and um, all that. Are you overweight? No, 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 I'm not at all. Okay, because that's another, right, sometimes sure. losing some weight. Right. And well, some, sometimes for, for really, really bad case, if nothing else works, sometimes surgery may, might be an option. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that off the bat, but mm -hmm. usually if nothing else is working, sometimes that might be an option as well. Again, okay. second opinion. We always urge getting a second opinion. If you're not happy with it, you want another opinion, give us a call. You have Dr. Manning, Dr. Douglas a call. We have pain management people. We had Dr. Hetty Otney on with last week. So I, I, I don't give up with just one. Make sure you go for that second opinion. Okay. Thank you very Take much. Take care. Well, Good luck. Hi, John. Thank you very much. Hi, John. John's listening to the TV. John? Hello. Hi, John. Could you turn down the TV and then we can talk? Hello. John? Hello. John? I think John's related to Maddie. John. <laughs> Hello. John. You know, there's a problem. Hello. What happens is a, there's a seven second delay. So if you're watching the TV, you keep hearing hello, hello, hello. And that doesn't. John? Hey, Doc. Could you I, hear me now? I yes. can hear you. Turn down the TV? Yeah, I'm in another room actually now. That's the way to yeah. handle. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Brooklyn, East New York. East New York. And what, again, another area that has a paucity of restaurants. Any, any good restaurant out there? Nah, nothing good happening, Doc. All the old tradition died away over uh -huh. here. Different culture, different time over here now. Nothing good. Nothing so tell good. me, like, you want to impress. You got a big date. You got a big date. Are you married? Uh, yes, I am. All right, so you're going out with your wife. Do you want to impress <laughs> her for the anniversary? Where are you going to go? Uh, actually, I go to the Poconos, believe it or not, Pennsylvania. Oh. <laughs> you ever see one of those heart-shaped um, spas? No. Okay, so, <laughs> so what can we do for you? My question to Doc is today is um, it has to do with um, can anyone develop lung disease from smoking marijuana? Because as you mm. know, a lot of states now are approving uh, medical marijuana, and I would like to know can you develop lung disease from smoking it? Good question. John, that is an absolute great question, and I will tell you that lung disease not only can be as bad as cigarettes with marijuana, it actually may be worse. Marijuana is what we call very toxic to the lungs, and it can cause what we have referred to as an accelerated form of lung damage. So I think, John, that for yourself or anyone you may know who's taking a lot of marijuana, it would be very, very important to stop 
because marijuana smoking does indeed cause lung disease. And I think your question is a phenomenal question. I get asked this many Thank times. You. People think that cigarettes are the only type of tobacco that causes um, uh, lung disease, but marijuana actually is much worse than cigarettes. So I'd like to congratulate you on the question. I think it's a great question, and I hope that we've answered it for you. Thank you. Uh, the reason I also brought it out there is because you see a lot of ads now on TV. They you know, basically talk about a lot of smoking cigarettes, but they never really mention marijuana. So a lot of people have this false impression that marijuana doesn't affect your lungs. John? You you really brought up a remarkable point. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks a lot, John. Thank you. Have Thank a good you. week. Welcome. Take care. Hi, Tiffany. Tiffany? Is that Tiffany? Yes. Hi, Tiffany. How are you? Yes. Are you? Is your TV on? Okay, I just now turned it off. Very good, very good. What make TV do you have, by the way? Say that again? What kind of TV do you have? One of those big flat screen? Yeah. Is it nice? How do, how do we look there? <laughs> <laughs> really good. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. What can we do for you? Okay. I, I come from Flatbush. Oh. And my question is, I'm going to dialysis right now. Mm-hmm. And the only way I've been told to um, go from dialysis to good health is a kidney transplant. Is that the truth? Oh, so Dr. Douglas, what okay. about kidney transplants? Kidney transplant. Okay. Um, uh, it, it would afford you the ability to get off the dialysis. I know it's, it's not easy to be three days a week, you know, hooked up to a machine. And really, it is a viable way of being able to get your, get your kidney uh, function restored. Yes. But it has its own complications. You know, it can be rejected by the body. You have to take medication to prevent rejection. It's a long story. Yeah, that's for the transplant. The transplant, exactly. But is there any other way besides the transplant? Not that I'm aware of, actually. No. Not that I'm aware what of. What was yet. the reason for the dialysis? Um, kidney disease. Oh, that you, you had it all your life or you just developed it? Oh, no. This just happened to me. Wow. No, I read it. There's a lot of a new study showed. Do, I'm sorry. Do you have diabetes? Do you have high blood no, pressure? No, 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 no. Wow. Oh, we, high blood pressure, yes. It may be related mm -hmm. to that. And a lot of people don't know they have high blood pressure and don't even know they have kidney disease until the mm -hmm. end. A lot of mm -hmm. time, no symptoms occur. Is right. that what happened in your case? Until the end, you really didn't know. Right. So that's a good reason for everyone to get their blood pressure, get his or her blood pressure checked and kidney function check. I think that should be part of an exam and yep. maybe a little bit more than the routine blood test, maybe um, to evaluate the function of the kidney, something that we don't always do. Do you do, you do that in a... Business? Well, actually, that's not recommended, actually, to just routinely just check kidney function. There's no organization that's really recommending just check kidney function. But if she has high blood pressure? If she has high blood pressure. Right, right. I mean, but somebody you know, with high blood exactly. pressure that comes we in. Exactly, we do check. We routinely right. check kidney function in patients with high blood pressure, diabetes. And but I've never, had, I've never had high blood pressure on a regular i didn't i never had high blood pressure it was some i had kidney stones and one of the oh. stones got lodged in the oh, renal I'm tract sorry. i'm sorry yeah that yeah it should only be one side though mm -hmm. you, had, yeah. you had stones on both sides both yeah kidneys? both sides okay oh. but yeah. only one side seems to be the worst the left side yeah mm. yeah oh, i was so sorry to hear that but it sounds like as dr douglas says that the the kidney transplant is the way to go for the most normal lifestyle exactly mm. oh man but look, I mean, people do very well. They live yeah, a long sure. time with oh, that. Yeah. You can, you can, you can you know, travel. You're not tied to a machine. What is that you have to live in fear. You never know when the kidney is going to be rejected. Well, you know, you can, go ahead. Go you ahead. can't live in fear. And a lot of people have kidney transplants. There's a famous basketball player, Alonzo Mourning, who had kidney transplants. And he went back to playing basketball, a very rigorous, strenuous sport. So have faith. I think that a kidney transplant, although frightening, there's a lot of good that could come for it. So I think rather than be frightened from it, you should almost accept it and look for it as a better lifestyle. And if the kidney failed, you'd be back on dialysis, which you are right now. So you'd be no worse off than what you are. And you have a chance to improve your lifestyle. You can travel. You wouldn't have to be tied to a machine for hours every, every two or three days. Every three days. And, and most people, from what I understand, when they come off dialysis, they are dead tired. No, I, that don't happen to me. Oh, well, you're lucky. You're lucky. I'm a, a um, symptomatic person. Mm -hmm. 
You don't let things bother you that much. But I think that's a good thing. Everybody here is in agreement that this is going to improve your lifestyle, the quality of your life. And the downside is you'll be back where you started. That's the worst. Uh, so, so I think be optimistic. Are you an optimistic person? <laughs> Not when it comes to him. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's uh, too scary. It's, mm. You know what? Call us back and let us, let us know if you need to call. You have all our phone numbers. We'll be happy to talk to you and to talk you through it because that seems to be the way to go. Okay. All right? Good luck. Cheer okay. up. Good luck. Thank you, guys. You're Take welcome. care. Be well. Good luck. I see we have Claudette now. Hi, Claudette. Hi. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Cambria Heights, Queens. I'm not familiar. Where, tell me about where that is. Like, how would I know I was in Cambria Heights? It's close to the borderline of Long Island. You're close to close Elmont. To, close to near the, near uh, Belmont Racetrack? Yeah. Very nice. I love that place. You ever go out there? Yes. I go there to visit my money sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what can we do with you? For I you? have extremely, extremely bad pain in my upper arm and shoulder, the right side. I've seen a chiropractor for, or orthopedic doctor for it. He did x-rays and I did an MRI and cannot see anything wrong. And it's mm. just getting worse and worse. Was it MRI of the shoulder or MRI of the neck? He did an MRI of the shoulder. And that came back clean, negative? Everything was good. Nothing so you have to check out your neck. Um, the reason is all the nerves that go to the arm come through the neck and go past the shoulder, and sometimes the wooden nerves may be irritated or pinched in the neck, and you may feel it in the shoulder. And you may also it feel it in the back. And then it makes some popping sounds like it's breaking. It, it, just, it just makes, it just pop, makes sounds all the time. I move my arm, you hear pop, pop. That might be something different, but if the, uh, MRIs are very sensitive. If it didn't pick up anything abnormal in the shoulder, I wouldn't put the money there. I'd put it with the, with the cervical spine. So I'm, I'm really sorry. We're so short of time that I've got to move on. I want you to call us back next week. We'll put you right at the top of the show, okay? Okay. Thanks. i got Michael. Hi, Michael. Michael? I think Michael. Uh, Michael? Hi, Michael. Can you talk up? I can't hear you. Okay, we're going to have to move on to Dorothy. Hi, Dorothy. Yes, hello. Oh, this is Dorothy <laughs> from Midwood Street? Excuse me? Are you from Midwood Street? No, not Ridgewood. Um... Oh, Ridgewood? No. Bensonhurst. Bensonhurst. Okay. And uh, what can we do? Because we have very little time and I want to get to uh, a question. I just wanted to let you know I'm the lady that had the 50th thousand baby. <laughs> oh, the 50th thousandth baby? Yes. Out of, out of Methodist, where? Methodist Hospital. Wow. wow. Now, I forgot the doctor. How long ago was oh, this? Dr. Marshall. Marshall. I don't know that name, but how long ago was this? Excuse me? How oh, long? Oh, that's uh, more than 50. How long was 1950 it was. Wow, so the, he's 59 years old? Yeah, I guess so. I'm just going. Where does he live? No, the, no, she it was a girl. Where does she live? She lives in the, the Queens. Is she doing well? Oh, yes. Oh, and what is she, does she work? Oh, yes, yes. Do you know what she does? Uh, the last time she was uh, in the office, office work. Office work, very nice. We're, we're glad to get that follow-up. Excuse me? Congratulations, and we're glad to get that follow-up. Thank you very much. Thanks for calling us. You're welcome. Thanks again. Hi, Mark. Yeah, hi. Mark, you made it to the last caller. We have a little bit of time. What's the question? Thank you for taking my call. Uh, my name is Mark from Borough Park. Oh, beautiful. What, Borough Parks have plenty of restaurants. Yes, they do. Now, my problem is that uh, many times when the air conditioning is on, my feet feel like I'm in an ice box. I've had my thyroid function checked. Uh, uh, my no diabetes, uh, and uh, so far we haven't found a problem, uh, a solution to the problem. What is the problem again? Knife in the feet? It feels like. No, when when Ice I'm in, a, in the air conditioned room, my feet feel like uh, ice box. Okay, like, Dr. Like Douglas. Very cold. Yes, they they the have they checked for something called Raynaud's phenomenon? Raynaud's not that I know of. I mean, there are there is a a, 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 a situation where. Um, you can get uh, the tips of the fingers or the tips of the toes becoming like very, feel really, really cold, or even turning almost white because of a condition called Raynaud's phenomenon. So Can that would be the R-A-Y-N-A-U-D. Raynaud's? Yeah, Raynaud's phenomenon. What can be done for that if that's the um, situation? Really just symptomatic things like keeping it warm. You know, you may have to wear an extra socks, mittens, you know, on the, on the, on the feet. 
because that seems to be the time it happens in your case. Maybe don't keep the place as cold as you would want it to be. Um, but if that's the only time it happens, then actually it, that's... It, it doesn't always happen. Sometimes it does, sometimes it's fine. I, I never know why and uh, when. And they check the pulses, the circulation, right? In the legs yes, and the circulation fine. is fine. Okay, yes, yes. That's what it sounds like to me. And it's not that uncommon, actually. It's just a, a nuisance kind of problem. It's not, it's not necessarily a, a, a disease. It can be related to joint diseases, though, what they call connective tissue disease. So it's something that should be checked. But sometimes it's just one of those things, you know, like that you might have to live with and just treat it by keeping it that area warm. So Thank you so much. I hope welcome. that that helps you. And I, I think it. that um, we're pretty much coming to the end of our show. You never know what you're going to get on Ask the Doctor. you got an old friend from Dr. Manning. We had a, the woman with the 50,000 baby in Bensonhurst. So you just never know. I told you it was going to be an all-star cast. Uh, <laughs> hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And that's it for this edition. I want to thank once again Dr. Montgomery Douglas, Dr. Reggie Manning, and Dr. Anthony Saylor for coming in. And we hope we were able to help you. It's good to remember that you should be proactive about your own health. Speak to your doctor about your concerns. Do it like we said. Go for second or third opinions. In the meantime, continue to watch every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. or visit our website at netny.net slash askthedoctor. There you can catch my video blogs, see past episodes, send in questions, or join in the new forum. I'm looking for you in that forum tomorrow. So thank you all for your calls tonight. I'll see you again next week with a brand new episode where we'll talk about heart disease, oral health. We have a dentist on next week and geriatric medicine. So goodbye, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the tablet.